Hello everyone. This video would focus on rewriting rational exponent form or otherwise called as a fractional exponent form to its equivalent radical form. Before we go farther, please feel free to check out the description below for the link of the other series of topics related to rational exponent form or fractional exponent form and radical expression or radical form. Please remember that the notation that you see right now is actually called as the rational exponent or the fractional exponent form. And this is read as b raised to the power m over n. Please notice that the exponent is in fractional form. Again, that's the reason why this is called a rational exponent form or fractional exponent form. We can actually rewrite this rational exponent form to its equivalent radical form. And this is its equivalent radical form. And this is read as the nth root of b raised to the power m. Now, please notice that our m in the rational exponent form is the numerator of the exponent. This is actually the exponent of the radicand in the radical form. On the other hand, the denominator of the rational exponent form, which is n, is actually the index of the radical form. So this is how we rewrite rational exponent form to its equivalent radical form. Now let's take some example to better see how these notations work. Okay, so let's take this first example. So this is read as x raised to the power two thirds. Now we remember that we can we actually first have to write the radical symbol. And we remember that this numerator here, we write the x first, that's the base. We remember that this two right here is actually the exponent of the x. And then this three right here is the index of the radical expression. So then we go ahead and rewrite this as the cube root of x squared. So this is its radical form and this is its exponential form. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So first, we're going to write the radical um, symbol. And then this xy is our base. We write it. That's xy. Now, please remember that this xy was placed inside the parentheses. So we're going to do that the same in, inside the radical symbol, which is the radicand. And so we can go ahead and say that this numerator here is the exponent of this whole thing. So I can write 3 right here. And this 5 is the index of this radical expression. So we are going to use the power of product property for exponents. That means this x and y gets the exponent of 3. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this as the fifth root of that's going to be x cubed and y cubed. So this is the equivalent radical form of quantity xy raised to the power 3 fifth. Did you get the same answer as this? Yay! Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. Okay. In this example, this is read as 2 quantity xy raised to the power 1 third. Now please notice that this exponent 1 third applies only to both x and y. That's the reason why there's a parenthesis next to, I mean, between them. So that means only x and y will have one third. This two is not included in the one third. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this as two. So we're going to have two first times this is going to be, we're going to uh, write the radical symbol. So that's the radical symbol right here. And then our um, base is xy. So I'm going to write xy as the radicand. And so we remember that this numerator is the exponent of this radicand. So that is to the exponent 1. And this 3 here is the index. So I'm going to write 3 here. Again, please notice that our 2 is not part of this whole thing, 1 third. That's why we had to put it separately from this whole expression. So that we can go ahead and simplify this further. This could be rewritten as 2 cube root of 
we remember that if it's raised to the power one, it's just the whole, it's just the same thing. So that is x, y. So this is our radical form for two quantity x, y raised to the power one third. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So this is read as three quantity four x y raised to the power two fifth. Now please remember that this three is not part of the two fifth. This four is because it is inside the parentheses. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this as three. We separate the three from the rest of them because it's outside the parentheses. And so we write the radical symbol. And we are going to write this as our radicand. That would be 4xy. We put it inside the parentheses. Now we remember that this numerator is the exponent for the radicand here. So we put 2. And this 5 is the index. We put 5 here. So that we can go ahead and simplify this further. We're going to use the power of product property for exponents. That means each of these is raised to the power 2 so that this can be simplified as 3 and then that's going to be the uh, times the fifth root of 4 squared is 16. X squared would be X squared and then Y squared. So this is the radical form of this given rational or fractional exponent form. Did you get the same answer as this? Yeah. Good, perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. Okay, so this example is read as quantity three x, y raised to the power five halves. So what are we gonna do here is that we are going to write the radical symbol. So I'm gonna write the radical symbol right here and the base here is 3xy, so I'm going to write this inside the parentheses, 3xy, and then this is raised to the power 5, because remember, this numerator is the exponent of the radicand here, so I'm going to write 5, and this 2 here is the index, so I'm going to write 2 right there. You don't have to write the 2, because if it's a 2, it becomes invisible, so this is read as the square root of quantity 3xy raised to the power 5. So what do we do right now is we are going to simplify this further. In order that we can do that, we see, we see that this is 3xy to the fifth. So we are we can rewrite this as that's going to be, we are going to write 3xy five times. So this is how it's going to look like. Okay, so this 3xy to the fifth can be expanded as 3xy written five times. Since this is square root, the, uh, the in index right here is 2. Again, it becomes invisible. I didn't write it, but there's a 2 right there. So that we can simplify this further, we can actually, we need to group them into 2. So we're going to come up with two groups of 3xy. So this is one group here. Again, the reason why I had to group them two because this index here is two. If this was three, then I would have grouped three three xy's. So then I'm going to group another uh, this two three xy's here. And we remember that once we group two of them, if it's a square root, we're going to put it outside the radical symbol. So I can go ahead and write three xy for the first one, that's for the first group, times 3xy for the second group, and then times, that's going to be the square root of whatever's the left over, which is 3xy. Now, if others are going to ask, like, how, how did you, why did you have to do that? Or why is it possible that we can do that? Please feel free to check out the uh, video lesson that I have on simplifying radical expressions. But for now, we have here 3xy times 3xy times the square root of 3xy. So what we would do is we can simplify this further. We're going to multiply this. So this would come out 9x squared y squared times the square root of 3xy. So this is our equivalent simplified radical expression for this fractional exponent or rational exponent uh, form right there. That's it.
If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!